good day, Deep and Word family. This is day eight of our Bible study review. Today's chapters is Genesis 26 through 28. Now, where we left off yesterday, we see that Jacob, right, he's able to make a mean pot of lentils. And so we see Esau came in from hunting and he was famished. You know, he was willing to give up the eternal things or the things of weighty matters for the temporal things. And this is something that we need to see as well, that we do have a birthright, y'all. We have been given a new spirit. We are called a new creation, but we do not have the body to match our spirit yet. And so when Messiah calls our names and we are brought up in the clouds to meet him, that is our birthday, okay? Do not be like Esau. Do not give up your birthright for the temporal things of here and now. Everything that is temporal will pass away, okay? But what you have sealed in the heavenlies is a body, a more glorious body waiting on you. So be like Jacob and chase after the eternal heavenly matters, the matters with more weight to them. So as we open up chapter 26, we see that there's a scarcity in the land. Now, this is the same thing that happened to Abraham. Do you remember Abraham had to go to the land of Mitzrayim, Egypt, because there was a scarcity of food. And so Yahuwah Elohim is telling Isaac, he goes, do not go to the land of Mitzrayim. And he goes, stay in the land of Gerar, stay in the land which I command you. And so this is what he tells him in verse three. He says, sojourn in this land and I shall be with you and Barak you. Barak means bless y'all. And he says, for I will give these lands to you and your seed, and I shall establish the oath which I swore to your father, Abraham. And I shall increase your seed like the stars of the Shamayim, that's heavens. And I shall give all of these lands to your seed, and in your seed all of the nations of the earth shall be Baruch, blessed. Verse 5, Elohim continues to speak and he says, Because Abraham obeyed my voice and guarded my charge, my commands and my laws, do you see, do you see the faithfulness of Father Abraham? Because he was faithful, Elohim is keeping true to his side. In covenant, there are two, two or more parties. Each party has a part to play, all right? Do you see Abraham had so much to do with Isaac and his wife? Abraham moved on what he believed to be true. And so he did not sit back and do nothing. Abraham moved on the promise. So he made sure that Isaac had a wife from his own father's house, that he was not married to one of the women of the Canaanites because he did not want to be pulled away from the covenant. He did not want his son to have outside influences. He wanted to make sure that this covenant and this promise moved forward. Let's continue reading in verse seven. And when the men of the place asked about his wife, he said, she is my sister. Oh, do you see that Abraham passed on a little bit of that lying tongue to his son? Do you see it? <laughs> and this is with the same king, King Abimelech. Abraham spoke the same lie to King Abimelech about his sister wife, Sarah. Okay. <laughs> and so it says, for he was afraid to say, she is my wife, lest the men of this place should kill me for Ribka or Rebecca, because she is so good looking. All of these women are too fine for their own good and they're barren. Do you see? You see the repetitiveness between the covenant partners and how our heavenly father will use imperfect beings to make his glory known. Please pay attention. So it says that King Abimelech was looking through a window and he saw Isaac playing with his wife, Rebecca, in a very loving manner. And so he confronts him and he says right here in verse nine, see, truly she is your wife. So how could you say she is my sister? And Yitzhak told him, because I said, lest I die on account of her. And Abimelech said, what is this you have done to us? Abimelech, he's like, this is Groundhog's Day. I'm dealing with this again. Boy, you're just like your daddy. <laughs> One of the people almost lain with your wife and you would have brought guilt on us. And Abimelech commanded all of the people saying, he who touches this man or his wife shall certainly be put to death. Abimelech remembers the covenant power between Abraham and Yahuwah Elohim. And Abimelech does not want that smoke. He doesn't want that smoke to come into his camp or anyone who is associated with him. So he made this known with all of the men in the land of Gerar. 
Isaac goes on to sow in the land and it says the same year he reaped a harvest, a hundred percent, a hundredfold. So he became blessed with many flocks, with the work of his hands. And it says that the Pelashites, which is the Philistines, it says that the Philistines started to envy him. So let's read in verse 15. And the Philistines had stopped up the wells which his father's servants had dug in the days of Abraham, his father, and filled them with dirt. And Abimelech said to Yitzhak, go away from us, for you are much mightier than we are. So here's Isaac in the land of the Philistines, and he is blessed beyond measure. You can see that his blessings are increasing, which causes an issue if you have a ton of flocks, herdmen, servants, then this takes up more room, more space. And so the people of the land were getting jealous. The people of the land were starting to feel insecure, fear. And so they were telling Isaac, leave this place. So Jacob, the tent dweller, moves his tent a little bit further out of their way. And so it says he continues to unblock the wells that Father Abraham had dug. He removes the dirt and the water starts to spring up again. And it says the people of the land strove with him, saying that this was their water. Now, do you remember the oath that Abraham had with King Abimelech concerning these wells? Now, we know that Elohim is going to back up Isaac because they made a covenant. Abraham made a covenant with King Abimelech. And so Elohim is going to make sure that he stays true to his side of the covenant. Since the people of the land were causing Isaac so much trouble, he went to dig a new well. And this is what it says in verse 22. And he moved from there and dug another well, and they did not strive over it. And he called its name Rehoboth and said, For now, Yahuwah has made room for us, and we shall bear fruit in the land. And from there he went up to Beersheba. And Yahuwah appeared to him the same night and said, I am the Elohim of your father Abraham. Do not fear, for I am with you, and I shall bless you and increase your seed for my servant Abraham's sake. So, of course, Isaac moves on this word from Yahuwah Elohim, and he builds an altar exactly where he spoke to him. And it says that now Abimelech and his commander, his whole team, come to him. And this is what Isaac says to them. Why have you come to see me, seeing you have hated me and have sent me away from you? And this is their response in verse 28. But they said, we have clearly seen that Yahuwah is with you. And we said, please let there be an oath between us, between you and us, and let us make a covenant with you, that you do not do evil to us as we have not touched you. And we have done only good towards you, and we have sent you away in peace. You are now Barak, blessed by Yahuwah. And they rose early in the morning and swore an oath with one another. So we see King Abimelech, he made a covenant with Abraham and he wants to make a covenant with Isaac because he sees where the blessing is. He sees where the anointing is. It's within that bloodline and he wants to be attached to it. Verse 32, and on the same day it came to be that the servants of Isaac came and informed him about the well which they had dug. And they said to him, we have found water. Immediately Elohim blesses Isaac. Chapter 26 ends letting us know that Esau, when he's 40 years old, he marries the local women of the land, the Hittites. He marries two women. And it says that these two women are in bitterness of spirit towards Rebekah and Isaac. They do not care for their parents-in-law. Now we open up with chapter 27 and we see that Isaac is getting older, right? It says his eyes are dim, so he can't see that well. He's getting close to death. So while he's on his bed. He wants to make sure that he passes on this blessing from Abraham, Isaac, and he wants to pass it to Esau. But we know it's not going to happen that way. And so he asks his son Esau, he goes, my son, please go out and hunt that wild game and make the tasty dish that I love so much that I may bless you. And so Rebecca, the mother, hears this and she immediately goes to grab Jacob and she plots with her son Jacob to get the blessing instead of Esau. Now we know that Jacob already has the birthright. Jacob is also after the blessing. Now mama Rebecca has a strategy and I want you to see right here in verse 8. And now my son listen to my voice according to what I command you. Please go out to the flock and bring me two young choice goats and I will make a tasty dish from them for your father such as he loves. So uh, mama knows how to cook too. How do you think Esau knows how to cook that wild game tasty dish? He learned it from his mama. Now she says in verse 
10. And you shall take it to your father and he shall eat it so that he might bless you before his death. Now, one thing to understand about Hebraic culture, Hebrew culture, which many Jewish people still hold to this day, the fathers, they bless their children. Many of them do it on a weekly basis on the Shabbat. So they will place their hands over their sons and their daughters' heads and they will bless them. They will speak a particular blessing over them. And y'all, words have power. Maybe you might not have had the best parents and maybe your parents have spoken a word that's not a blessing. And so many of us are fighting those words still, but our Heavenly Father has a different word that he has spoken over us. All right? But I want you to see that this is a healthy way to cultivate blessing within your family is to speak blessing over your children. Wives, speak blessings over your husbands. Husbands, speak blessings over your wife. This is a biblical thing and this has power. This is the biblical order of things. And now moving along with the plan for Jacob to receive this blessing, he addresses concerns with his mother and he goes, mother, my brother is hairy as all outdoors. He's hairy like a beast. And she goes, do not fret my son. So the goats that she tells him to go get from the flock, she takes the goat skin. All right. She wastes nothing. She uses the meat for the stew, but she uses their skin to create a skin for Jacob so that he seems hairy like Esau. So Isaac puts on the skins. Rebecca makes the stew quickly. And so he brings it to his father. As he enters the room, Isaac says, who is it? Who is here? And so Jacob says, it is Esau, your firstborn son. Immediately he goes to deceive his father. Again, he's chasing after the blessing. This is something that Elohim has placed in his heart. And so even though Isaac can't see, he's like, how did you make this so quickly? How did you do this so fast? So Isaac is doubting. He goes, if you are truly my firstborn Esau, come here so that I may touch you and feel you. So he feels the hairiness of his son. And then he smells the skin of the animals. And he goes, you smell like my son Esau. So he calls him near to bless him. So y'all, the belly of Isaac is full. He's got a little fermented grape juice in his system and he is ready to set this thing off with the blessing. He says, and Elohim give you the dew of the Shamaim, of the fatness of the earth and plenty of grain and wine. Let peoples serve you and the nations bow down to you. Be master over your brothers and let your mother's sons bow down to you. Curse be the one who curses you and bless be the one who blesses you. And it came to be as soon as Isaac finished blessing Jacob and Jacob had hardly left the presence of Esau that Esau, his brother, came in from hunting. Now time still has to pass because Esau has to make the wild game stew. But once he is done, he brings the stew to his father and he goes, Father, I am here. I have made the wild game stew the way that you asked. And Isaac is like, what? If you're Esau, who came in to feed me the wild game before you? He says, I ate of it and then I blessed him. Even so, he is blessed. Verse 34, when Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with an exceedingly great cry. And he said, Father, please bless me too. Bless me, O my father. And he said, your brother came with deceit and took your baracha, which is your blessing. And Esau said, was his name then called Ya'akob? For he has caught me by the heel these two times. Esau cried, he took my birthright and see, now he has taken my blessing. And he said, have you not reserved a blessing for me, father? Then Isaac answered and said to Esau, see, I have made him your master and all of his brothers I have given to him as servants and I have sustained him with grain and wine. And what then shall I do for you, my son? Verse 41, and Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing which his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, the days of mourning for my father draw near and I am going to my brother. So he had every plan of doing away with him. And so it says in verse 42, and the words of Esau, her older son were reported to Ribka and she sent and called Jacob, her younger son, and said to him, see your brother Esau comforts himself concerning you. He wants to take your life. And so I highlighted, reported, and circled it because it does not say who reported this to Rebecca. It doesn't say who. Did Elohim make it known to her? Because the father is going to confirm the plan. He's going to make sure that life is preserved to bring about this promise. 
So Rebecca tells her son Isaac to flee to her brother Laban's house so that he may be safe. And from there, she wants him to take a wife. She also despises the wives of Esau. As we open up chapter 28, we see that Isaac now calls his son Jacob. He calls to him and he gives him the instruction. He says, do not take a wife from the land of Canaan. He says, go to the house of your mother's brother's house and take a wife from there. He says he despises as well the local women. He wants to make sure that the promise of Elohim continues to move forward. So he says, flee, dwell in a safe place of your mother's brother's house. So Esau is made aware of this. And so he disposes of the two local wives that he has. And he goes to his uncle Ishmael and takes a wife from one of his daughters. Now the scene flips and we see that Jacob is on his way to Laban's house. But on the way, he makes a stop. And this is what happens in verse 12. And he dreamed a dream and saw a ladder standing on the earth and on its top reached the Shamaim, the heavens, and saw messengers of Elohim going up and down on this ladder. And see, Yahuwah stood above it and he said, I am Yahuwah Elohim of Abraham, your father, and the Elohim of Yitzhak, the land on which you are lying, I give to you in your seed. Do you see how the father is confirming the covenant? And he says in verse 14, and your seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and you shall break forth from the west and the east and the north and the south, and all the clans of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your seed. And see, I am with you and shall guard you wherever you go and shall bring you back to this land. For I am not going to leave you until I have done what I have spoken. Abba ain't playing. What he speaks will not fall to the ground. And he confirmed it within Jacob. He says, although you're going to this land to go get a wife for yourself at your uncle's Laban's, he goes, I will bring you back to this land right here. And please believe it. I will confirm every word that I have spoken to Abraham and your father Isaac. Now I'm confirming it with you. Verse 16, and Yaakov, Jacob, awoke from his sleep and said, truly, Yahuwah is in this place and I did not know it. And he was afraid and he said, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of Elohim. And this is the gate of the Shamayim, the gate, y'all, the opening. There are many people who do a study on this gate and on this dream that Jacob had. Let's continue. Verse 18. And Jacob rose early in the morning and took the stone that he had put on his head and he put it up as a standing column and poured oil on top of it. So the rock that he used as a pillow to fall asleep on because he dreamed a dream and because Elohim made himself known to him and confirmed it. He said this rock right here, this rock is holy. He poured oil over it. Verse 19. And he called the name of that place Beth El or Beit El. All of this is pointing to Christ. We know that Christ is the bread of life. He is the way back to the Father. I just want to help you see something right here. And so Jacob makes a vow and he says, seeing Elohim is with me and has kept me in this way that I am going. And he has given me bread to eat and a garment to put on. What garment is he talking about? Y'all, remember I told you, you have a birthday coming up. This earth suit is a garment, but this earth suit will not enter into the kingdom with Messiah. We must put on a new garment. And so he has a new glorified heavenly body waiting for us, but we must hold fast to the faith. We must hold fast and be true to the covenant so that we can work out our salvation with fear and trembling so that we may be born into that new glorious body. Do you see it? Please tell me you see it. And if you do, don't be silent. Say something in the chat. Verse 21. When I have returned to my father's house in peace and Yahuwah shall be my Elohim, then this stone which I have placed as a standing column shall be Elohim's house. Bethel or Beit El. And all that you give me, I shall certainly give a tenth to you. A tenth meaning the first, right? When you wake up, your first breath should be, thank you, father. Thank you for this breath. You should give him your first thought. You should give him your first everything because he is first. And if he is not first upon the throne of your heart, you have an idol. You have to scoot those idols off and put the king where he belongs. First place. He will not come second to anyone or anything. 
That is all I have for today's Bible study review. I hope that you have enjoyed it. Yah bless.